All right, so let's write some system Verilog. First, go to File, New, Project, and we're just gonna call this uh, YouTube Example. And we're gonna create a new file, and I'm gonna call this Example FSM, Sample Finite State Machine. And we're doing this in System Verilog. And for some reason, this is really hidden, but I think, yeah, there we go. Okay, so created it here. Just double click to get in there. Okay, and this is the state machine that we're gonna implement. I just found it online, it's pretty nice. You can see it's a more state machine because the outputs, these values here, are only dependent on the current state. And to keep the naming consistent, we're just gonna call this module example FSM, and it's gonna have some input. So we're gonna have an input that's a logic, so just a high-low, that's gonna be clock, and input logic reset input logic and we're gonna have the input that's gonna be this value here uh, we're just how about we call the input logic a actually no we're gonna call the state a so I'm, instead I'm gonna call the input logic X and the output logic is gonna be Y and like I just said I'm gonna call the state a so that means that we're gonna create a type definitions for each of the states. So instead of numbering them, you know, this is state zero, zero, this is state zero, one, this is state one, zero, so on and so forth. We're just gonna be create a type definition. Uh, and that's gonna be a logic. And because there's only five states, we only need three bits. And so we're gonna give these states values. So the state's gonna be A, B, C, D, E. And I'm gonna call this type uh, state. And we're gonna create two state variables, so to speak. So one's gonna be current state, and the other is gonna be next state. And now we're actually gonna start writing the logic. So actually, let's just end module and compile this and make sure it's all working here. Compile all. Yep, successful. No problems yet. So now we're gonna go always flip flop at pause edge of the clock. So on the rise and edge of the clock. And what are we gonna do there? We're gonna check if the reset bit has gone high. So we can just say if reset. And if we do that, what I'm gonna say is that the current state, so if reset goes high, we're gonna go back to A. It doesn't matter where we are. So we're gonna say the current state is A. And that's nice just because we've defined them up here. So if that's not the case, on every positive edge, we're gonna set the current state equal to the next state. So that's our synchronous operations. So we have a synchronous reset and then we have a synchronous you know, jump around. Now our combinational logic is gonna be what state to go into based on our input. Combinational logic, always comp. And in this, we're just gonna do a case statement. We're gonna say case, what's the current state? If the current state's A, what do we have to do? Well, let's take a look at this. If the input, which we've called X is one, then the next state is gonna be C. If the input is zero, the next state's gonna be B. So let's just write that down. So we could say if X equals one, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna say if X, because that's better programming, then the next state is gonna be C. If not X, i.e. X is zero, then we're gonna go to B. So next state equals B. Now, I'm just gonna copy this because we're basically just gonna do the exact same thing for every other state. So let's go. Now we're in B, what happens at B? If we get a one, we go to D. So if X is one, we go to D. If X isn't one, if it's zero, then we just stay in B, stay in B all day long. Let's do C now. What happens if it's a one? Well, we stay in C. It's writing itself. If it's not, then it goes to E. Now D, and we can just end our switch there. But just to be cautious, throw in a default at the end. If it's not A, it's not B, not C, not D, not E, then let's just send it to A, so. Okay, so there's that. Now let's compile all again, successful, and let's keep this going. Now, like I said, this is a more state machine, so the output is just dependent on the state. What's the output? The output's this here, so zero, 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 one, one. So we could do something like, you know, output zero if we're now at A or output zero if we're in B or output zero if we're in C or output one, but if we're in D or output E if we're in one or something crazy like that. But I mean, the most 
efficient method would just be going, hey, yeah, set y equal to if the current state equals d, then we set it to 1, or, so this is a simple form of or, the current state equals e, set it to 1. What we're doing here is we're making an assignment. So this is, you, you can visualize this, this is a wire, right? And this is just the input to the wire. We've got an AND gate and an AND gate connected to an OR gate. So try to visualize it in hardware and you'll save yourself hassle later on. Okay, and that's it for this video. But in the next video, we're gonna write a test bench and we're gonna simulate this. So stay tuned.